and welcome to a new series of videos regarding the CD555 sound machine from Philips. Um, this time I want to introduce you to a new project I'm working on and it is about to replace the microcontroller board of the sound machine. For those who have seen my other videos or follow me in forum or on the website, you probably noticed that I already replaced the tape mechanism uh, microcontroller because of yeah, it has the design has some flaws. If the tape mechanism isn't able to do what the CPU expects, the CPU CPU hangs, and because the CD player CPU is connected directly and waiting for inputs from the tape microcontroller, the CD player also hangs, and it will not be possible to press play. And this is a very serious issue. Even if the belt of the tape mechanism is weak, the CD player won't work anymore. Not very useful, isn't it? So I replaced it and although it was working quite well, it has some drawbacks. Um, the communication between the microcontrollers is not synchronized, even because the replacement CPU is using a cycle time um, 16 megahertz and divided by four, so four megahertz for the CD player. But sometimes the CPU is not able to detect uh, the information when a CD ends or a track ends. However, there are also a lot of features missing in the CD player, which I want to have, like shuffle play, <laughs> quite an easy feature, and uh, not supported in 1986. And I'm also going to add um, intro play, so to play every track for about 10 seconds if you buy a new CD. Okay, whoever is buying a new CD today, I don't know. I do, at least. I want to listen to all the tracks, at least for 10 seconds. Um, and I also want to store playlists like the FTS features of Philips CD players back those days. And in addition, I want to use a remote control to jump to the next track. Well, um, in this case, for the development of this board, this is the first release that I developed. Um, to be honest, I wasn't expecting that it is working without any issues and to be honest I messed up badly but however I can use it and during the last weeks I made some really good progress on this um, if you're just wondering where is the sound machine well I'm not using the sound machine in this case I'm using the Philips CD150 it's just because of space on my desk it has the same CDM2 drive as the Philips CD555 and I need the board for all the voltages and the power supply of the CDM2. There's one thing to say about the CDM2. Um, early releases of the CDM2 have their own microcontroller to control the laser beam and the motor and they are communicating with another CPU through an I2C bus. Um, later on, Philips um, replaced the microcontroller or removed the microcontroller of the CDM2 and they are only using one microcontroller for all the controls and the laser beam and so on. So not every CDM2 is able to be controlled in that way. Um, However, in this case, it's a little bit easier. We have an I2C bus. If we want to uh, replace the microcontroller of the CDM2, this is getting another challenge to control the laser beam and so on. Would be very interesting and maybe I'm going to do this someday. Um, the first step was to listen to the I2C bus. What's about the communication, what are, how they are talking to each other. And I was using my own breakout board for an I2C sniffer. Um, first I was using my oscilloscope. It's quite complicated in that way. So I used the sniffer and had a detailed list. 
I was able to control all the functions of a CDM2 and that was my, <laughs> my goal for creating and developing my own microcontroller board. And it's not completely finished, it's a work in progress, but I'm on a good way. I'm going to give you more information, more details about how it is working. Okay, let's have a look at the original microcontroller board. We can see a huge shield here, which is very important because the tape panel is very close and it can cause some interference in the audio signal if the shield got removed. So if we're going to remove it, we can see two microcontrollers, one for the cassette and one for the uh, CD player. I've just put the um, microcontroller here on a socket and replaced all the uh, capacitors. So in the original board you will see light blue Philips, which are basically all uh, garbage. Just get rid of them. And I put a cooler on to the power converter. I was using a 7806 for that. We can see a lot of diodes, the, the circuits to control the tape mechanics, the driver for the motor. And there is the clock, a crystal running, I think at six megahertz is also uh, the clock for the CD player microcontroller through this transistor here. There are a lot of connectors, of course, because this board is controlling basically everything of the machine. It's the heart of the machine. That this connector here goes to the tape mechanism for controlling and uh, switching all the uh, capstan, motors, relays, and so on. And there is one from the tape mechanism for the sensors, for the photo uh, transistor, the LED, and all the switches. The connector for the um, keys of the tape designed in a matrix because there are a lot of keys and a lot of buttons for this. Um, not so the buttons for the CD player, they are very basic. And as I said before, the keys play, stop, and pause of the CD player are controlled by the tape controller. And to get this information or forward this information to the CD player, both are connected with input and output pins with a lot of complicated um, circuits in behind with transistors and so on. Um, of course, this is not a very flexible um, connection. So then we only send the play, pause commands and the CD microcontroller sends back if a track or the ends or the CD as a whole ends. And there is also a connector for the lid of the CD player, because if the CD player opens, it gets through an in recognized through an input pin here. I don't know why this makes any sense because if you open the lid of the CD player, the 5 volt, which are powering this CPU, also switch off. And this <laughs> does not make any sense, but well, maybe some design changes. An important resistor is this here. This is a fusible resistor, needs to be checked. Let's have a look at the real side. And as you can see, since it's a single-sided board, it is complicated. It really looks complicated. There are two resistors and one transistor. They are always there, so maybe some design changes from Philips in the last minute. I have no idea exactly. Um, they are also undocumented. And if you have a closer look to the power supply, for preparing the 6 volt is also unsupported because it's very different than in the service manual. You can see 
hopefully a lot of very small transistors and this was one goal for me to get rid of all those tiny transistors because it's quite hard for me to uh, handle them and for us it's a little bit easier because I'm using a double-sided PCB, not single-sided. As you can see there are a lot of bridges here and back those days I think this was quite complicated to design. Now let's have a look what I've done so far. Here is the first prototype I designed with my breakout board. You can see it takes some time to load the table of content. The communication was not correct. It's getting a little bit faster now. And the buttons <laughs> were not working quite well. It took some time to recognize the click or not. And on the screen you can see the communication protocol between those uh, microprocessors i square c bus. Here's a closer look to the breakout board. <laughs> a lot of cables, um, not working quite well, but it has done the job. I was able to analyze all the different commands and to implement the features step by step. And here a picture where I've already implemented the EEPROM to store the playlists. Now a closer look to the first uh, prototype of the new uh, microcontroller panel. As you can see, I messed up several things. Um, I have no idea how it could happen that I was using the wrong gates. Well, um, yeah, I need to fix this anyway. Um, there are some cables here for power supply 12 volt because we are not using not using this board inside the machine itself and this is the connection to the CDM2 um, 5 volt ground and the I square C bus. I put some LEDs onto the board for debug, getting some debug information. There are all the connectors even more connectors. There are basically four new connectors, one from, for the infrared receiver, two for uploading the firmware. I will combine this in a, into one uh, connector and there's one for the OLED display that goes to the digital counter that I created. As you can see, I moved the power supply to the bottom. Um, we need to prepare 6 volt and 5 volt. Um, 5 volt is getting a little bit hot. Of course, we <laughs> have an input uh, of 12 volts, so this does not make any sense. I'm searching for a different um, method, which does not make it too hot. The best thing would be to um, design to also design the power supply in a different way. Anyway, as you can see, they're both microcontrollers, they are both the same for the tape mechanism, very similar to what I've done already with the tape microcontroller replacement and a new microcontroller for the CD player. Before they were connected together with input and outputs, they are now connected through a serial connection, which gives us much more flexibility. There's the EEPROM and of course the gates that are replace all the transistors. So we have way less transistors on the rear side. The electronic of the tape mechanism for the relays and for the yeah, capstan and other functions are one by one the same, except uh, the different values for the Darlington circuits here, because in the original ver version, 
we are switching with, we are switching with six volts and in this case the microcontroller only gives an output of five volt so we need to switch with five volts and need to switch uh, six volt and a certain amount of current however I was using a dip switch in this uh, release but it not it's not used anymore so I'm going to remove this I also need to reduce the cost a little bit maybe and there's a reset button which I need to move to the upper side when I want to put the shield back on um, on this side on the front side it looks quite nice but we don't want to <laughs> flip it over as you can see um, some corrections a lot of corrections maybe but nothing to worry about I already redesigned the board and I need to order a new one and get the second prototype or probably the the final board it would be nice if the if it would if the board would be white as the original one but that's not possible with the service provider I was using for this uh, board and next board also will have the shield and the ground as a mask on the whole um, board I'm talking and talking I think it's time for a short demonstration what do we have here is of course the board the CD150 with the built-in CDM2 which is connected through an I2C isolator which is necessary because we are using different power supplies then the tape mechanism it is not connected we cannot hear anything the LCD the original LCD of the CD, of the CD555 and also all the buttons from the sound machine it was very important for me to do not change anything from the outside so the user cannot see a difference it's using the same LCD display and the same buttons there are no more buttons even if there are new features implemented which makes it quite hard to add new features and to display them on the LCD if you have limited um, opportunities here there's also an, an Philips amplifier connected with a small speaker just that we are able to listen to the CD as I said we will not hear anything from the tape because yeah, it's not connected here um, for sure the I2C isolator got mounted with a duct tape because there's nothing in the world that you cannot fix with a duct tape now let's see Let's simulate that we open the CD lid, which I can do with this cable here. Um, later on, the CD lid, uh, the switch gets connected here. So if we open it, there's no disk inside. Usually in the original CD555, the CD microcontroller gets no power if the CD lid got open. We're going to close it again. We can see the CDM2 is reading the table of contents and we do have 11 tracks on the CD. And then we can use just the buttons of the CD555. Let's click play. We can switch to the time, which can also be done by the CD555. But Another click on time shows the remaining time of this track. This is a new feature. And here's the uh, time of the CD, the overall time. You can switch between the tracks and the time. Um, we can jump to a track by just clicking on or entering the track number and press play. That's like it's like in the original CD555 but we do have more features now available and to create a kind of uh, user interface 
you need to go bin, not to next not go to next to the tracks from 1 to 11 in this case you go below 1 there's a for shuffle for the f ts and for the intro which plays all uh, tracks for about 15 seconds now if you want to um, create a randomized playlist just click go to shuffle and press play and now it creates a randomized playlist okay the position one in the playlist is on the track one position two is the track three position three track two nice and if there's a playlist start you can see a p here which means there's a playlist hit again on stop and it removes the playlist that's basically as in the original cd555 but if we create a playlist for instance play track 4 and track 8 and maybe 10 and afterwards 7. Um, in this case we have four uh, tracks stored and if we go to to the FTS and hit program, we store the uh, playlist into the EE prom. And the next time we're going to insert the disk again, we will see the playlist of four tracks got loaded automatically. We do not need to enter any number like in the original FTS features. That's all. Um, created with a unique ID of the CD. We can hit play to play the playlist. The you, the Jump to the next position. I die. We can clear the playlist again with stop. And if we go back to FTS and hit play, it loads the, blah, the playlist again. Not delete. No, oh, I deleted the playlist. Okay. Um, let's store it again. So if if we are at the FTS screen, it is possible to press program to store a playlist, stop to clear the playlist or play to load the playlist from the EEPROM. Um, if we go to shuffle, then it creates a randomized playlist out of the playlist that is already stored here. So instead of track four, we're starting with track eight, for instance. Then what else do we have? The fast forward, let's put the track time. So that's everything working. Of course, the repeat key is working. And if we want to play or listen to a CD for about 15 seconds of each track, we we'll go to intro and press play. Then it's a playlist from number one to 11 in this case. And after 15 seconds, it automatically jumps to the next track. Okay, so that's enough for this. Um, now we can also use the remote control. This is a uh, remote control from Philips from another um, sound machine or music deck, which was basically crap. And <laughs> and I'm still searching for the perfect uh, remote control, which has all the buttons for yeah for the features we've added here. We do have to repeat a repeat button so we can enable repeat. Click on shuffle and then it automatically creates a randomized playlist and starts playing. There's also a display key here so we can switch the, yeah, well, display. The LCD has a cold joint somewhere here. So sometimes this happens. 
but we can maybe jump to track five. It played well, not two times. It's We can also use the number keys, two for track two, or maybe two times press one for track 11. With also the fast forward, uh, come on, again. I need to replace the cables here. Yeah, well, not everything is, is, is working perfect. So um, it's still in development. There are still some bugs in the software that need to be fixed. But overall, it is working. And yeah. That's for the um, CD player, for the cassette, it's working as expected. Um, the only problem is that, uh, um, that the motor is way too fast because I'm using the wrong Cena diodes. This will change, of course. Um, and in this case, we can also use the remote control. There is no tape button here. I'm using USB. <laughs> Press play. Stop. Forward. Run. Yeah, the, the motor is way too fast for that. Um, there's also the repeat key supported. And also track search which is not working at the moment because we need the input from the uh, tape electronics when the tape reaches a pause between the tracks. Well, I think uh, that covers all for the moment. I'm currently um, developed or designed the second board, which will hopefully work without any issues then. And this prototype, this prototype board, even if it looks not so beautiful on the real side, everything is working. So I'm very confident that the next release might also be the last one and the final. Okay, so that's all for the moment. Next time I will create another video with the new board. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye.